Good morning, New Salem. We're going to go ahead and get started with our morning devotion. If you all can please center yourselves. We're going to go ahead and get started with our morning devotion. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. We want to welcome you to our youth-led Sunday. Uh, We do have some youth that are out today that are not feeling well, so we would like for you to support us today, please. If you know the songs while we are up there singing, sing with us because we are limited, but we know God is still going to work it out. So uh, we were gonna have we are gonna have prayer this morning by um, Unique and Kendall, followed by that. We're gonna have Old Testament by Nivea. We're gonna have New Testament by Jalisha. Then we are gonna have a um, devotional song and then we'll go from there. Okay, so we thank you in advance for participating. And if we can have one of the young ladies to come up with our prayer, please. Can you please bow your heads and close your eyes? Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us all up this morning. I just pray for every day. Just pray for my mom and me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Can you please bow your head and close your eyes? Can't you please pray for me and my mom? My family, my friends, my sister, and please pray for my school and my brother in Jesus' name. Everyone close your eyes. We we thank you for my sister, my mom, and my parents in Jesus' name, pray, amen. Amen. Um, I'll be reading Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, and it reads, My son, forget not my law, but heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long and a long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let no mercy and truth forsake thee bend them about thy necks, write them upon the table of thine heart. So so thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. I have read Proverbs chapter three verses one through five. I'm going to be reading Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Be ye there, therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. For fornication in all uncleanness or covenant, covenantness, let it not be once named among you, as becometh saints, neither filthness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. No gates of pearls If there were no streets of gold If there was no the world No In a land where we won't grow old I'm not thinking 
about those sights won't be there to enjoy the view i think heaven will be all right as long as you're there as long as there is you i'm not thinking won't be there I think heaven, as long as you're there, 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 when I get there, as long as you're there, as long as you're there. As long as you're there, when I get there, I don't care about the streets to go. I don't really want the mentions, no. Just to be in your presence when I get there. As long as you're there, as long as you're there, as long as you're there, when I get there. As long as you're there, as long as you're there, as long as you're there, when I get there. Verses 26 through 32 inclusive. We know how to do this. I'll read first. You read the next verse. And when we get to the last one, we'll read it together, okay? The words will appear on the screen, and they're also inside of our morning program. Leviticus 23rd chapter, verse 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, And ye shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. And together. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even, shall ye celebrate your Sabbath, 
Prepare your hearts and minds now for our intercessory prayer. Good morning. You know, <clears throat> this year, 2022, is a year of growth. Okay? We're going to have to step off into places where we haven't gone before. We have to pray prayers that we haven't prayed before. That's right. That's right. You know, and some of us are going to have to take in, you know, I went searching. It was something I had to do, okay? And it's because God wanted me to move. I learned later that he wanted me to move so that other people could step up. All right? And some of us are going to have to move so other people can step up. All right? The world is not a good place right now. There's so much going on. Do you realize if you look at Sodom and Gomorrah, how many good people did God want to find? To tell you? How many? How many did he say, show me this person and I won't destroy this city? Well, you know what? The city got destroyed. Now, America is on the brink, whether we realize it or not. You know, we got, and I'm not a politician, but we got a president waiting to jump back in office so he can go back to doing what he was doing. But don't you know he can't do no more than we pray and let him do? So some of us, at least one of us, will have to get right. At least one. Because I believe if God finds one good one, the rest of us can make it. Yeah, he'll spare the whole city. The whole country. Now, when we, we got to learn how to pray, pray for real. You know, what's missing today is compassion. Because when Jesus was praying, he always had compassion. That was the first step, compassion. When he prayed for somebody, it was always compassion. Always compassion. So if you need prayer this morning, and let's not be selfish. If you know somebody that needs prayer, we need to get up here. If you know somebody, don't, don't expect for somebody else to do it. See, that's the problem. Everybody waiting for somebody else to do it. Well, well, if they do it, then, then, then it'll be taken care of. No, we have to do it. Let's step up this morning. Oh, my God. There's power in the name, precious name. And see, I need my young people to come up here, too, because in the future, Bless I'm going to be counting on you. Come on up here. If you know God got something for you to do, come on up here, because we're going to make a pledge and a promise to God that we're going to step up.
stepping up this morning, if not for ourselves, for somebody else, oh Lord. My God, we want you to hear our prayers, because I know that you've selected this church, these individuals, these sheep, my God. Lord, we thank you. Heavenly Father, I ask you to take and touch each and every one of us, especially me, Lord. I touch each one of us, Lord. Take and remove anything that might get in the way, Lord, because we want to be that light on the hill, Lord. My God, we want your Holy Spirit. We want the power. We want the gifts, Lord. We want everything that you have to offer us, Lord. My God, my God. There's a world out there crying and begging, Lord, and we want to be the ones to take it to them, Lord. My God, Jesus. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord, if we can't tell them, who can tell them? 
If we were to look at each other, Lord, and listen to our testimonies, each one of us got a story of where we've been. And some of them are not so pleasant, Lord. My God, my God. Before you would take it and pray, my God, you would always have an act of compassion. Lord, I'm asking you right now to find that compassion in each one of us so that we may be able to get this prayer up, Lord, and we can see results of this prayer. Lord, we want this place to be a place where the broken come. Well, not one or two are healed, but all are healed, Lord. My God, I'm asking you for a complete mind shift. Not one from, oh, it's Sunday, I got to go to church. But, oh, Lord, let me, let me be a church Monday through Monday. Let me bring what you give me to the church. Let me do my part. My Lord, and I'm asking you, Lord, to touch my children, Lord. Touch my children. Because you see, if they in the school and they take you with them, then the school going to calm down. Because we know that there is none greater, no power greater than what you have. Lord, I'm asking you to touch the teachers, the Sunday school teachers, Lord. My God, give them that compassion and that love, Lord. Let them know that, let the children know that we understand. But we have experience too, Lord. And just like we praying for them, somebody pray for us. Lord Jesus, thank you for the prayers for us. And may we have those sincere prayers for those young people. May we have those prayers for the world. We're asking you to step into our lives more than you are right now. Because it starts with us, Lord. We put each one of us on the front line. My God, and if it's one week, Lord, let, us, let them stand behind us. Let us fill in the gap, Lord. Because now we need your power more than ever. More than ever, Lord. And Jesus, I just say thank you for all the frontline soldiers in New Salem. Lord, strengthen us from the least to the mighty. Strengthen us. Let us move as we move into the giftings that you've given us, Lord. Let us not be afraid to step off in it and trust you, Lord. God, give us that faith. Give us that strength, Lord. My God, and we're just going to give you all the praise right now. We're going to give you all the praise right now. And we're not going to be scared to say, Jesus is Lord. My God. Lord, we're just going to just stop it right here and just say thank you for what you're going to do. Not for what you did, what you're going to do in each one of our lives. Because we're, gonna, we're willing to be a sacrifice. A living sacrifice. We're living to be an example to let people know that God is real. You know. People say, well, I know God's real because I'm standing here. Because <laughs> I'm standing here. My God. Lord, let us show this to the world. I'm asking you for a big light, a searchlight in each one of us. Not a little candle light, a searchlight. That the world may see who we work for, who we belong to. And once again, we're giving you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' holy name, amen.
by grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus all. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Thank you, God. says he is my mind he is my heart I give you my soul Lord I need you to take control I tried it I tried it on my own but what I found is I can make it on my own on my own Tell me, what can I do? Because I can't live without you. I can't live without you. Tell me, what can I do? Because I can't live without you. Just can't live without you. One more time. So here's my heart. Here is my mind. I give you my soul, Lord. I need you to take control. Oh, I tried everything, tried it on my own. But what I found is I can make it on my own. On my own. I can make it, Jesus. I can make it. On my own, on my own, I can make it, I can make it. One more time, so tell me what can I do? I can't live, I can't live without you, I can't live without you. Come on, everybody, so tell me, tell me what can I do? I can't live without you. I can't live without you. I can't live without you. Tell me, say, tell me, what can I do? I can't live without you. I can't live without you. I can't live with you. One more time. Tell me, tell me, what can I do? I can't live. I can't live without you. Live without you. 
found out real quick. I found out unexpectedly that I couldn't make it. Now, now, mama and grandmama and, 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 and grandpa and daddy gave me the tools, but I still couldn't, I still found myself not really making it. So, you know, look into the hills which come in your help. Your help come from God. Anybody? Because, I, I mean, if, if, if when I think about the goodness of Jesus and what he's done, even on this year, what he's going to do. Come on, if you if you believe in God in the house today, lift your hands and give him praise right where you are. You don't need an audience. You don't need a, 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 a cheerleading squad. All you need is Jesus. Come on, give him glory right where you are. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's so worthy. Come on, right where you are, hallelujah. I understand it's you, Sonny, but let's get a praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, you're so worthy, God. Hey, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Freedom is what we need from you. Freedom is what we need from you, oh God. Yeah. Oh, Jesus.
So we're going to move on with service. But we got an announcement. Come on. Come on. Myself to, I count not myself to apprehend, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the, those things which are before. Philippians 3.13. Sister Pike has an announcement. I have several announcements, so please bear with me. <laughs> First of all, uh, we will have mission meeting next Saturday. I need all of our women to come out. We have a program at the end of this month, ladies. So we have a lot of work to do. Sheehan, I need to talk with you, please, after church, okay? We got work to do. Um, we will wear our white, ladies, so Let's be uniform. I'll come fifth Sunday of this month. Next Sunday morning, all minister wives and deaconettes wives, we're meeting here at church at 8 o'clock for prayer. This is something that our pastor wife has started, and so we're asking all of you that can come out for the prayer at 8 a.m. next Sunday morning. Also, let's remember our First Lady in prayer, she lost a nephew this week. Um, they will be funeralizing him next Saturday, right? So let's keep that family in prayer, the whole entire family, please. Next, um, our very own Sister Jennifer will be having a procedure here. So she's going to be out of commission. So if anyone wants to do anything, she's asking not for any food. Right, Sister Jennifer? But if you want to feed her family, that's fine. But she's asking for juices, if that's the case. If that's the case, that's fine. Just juices. And keep her in our prayers as well, please. I think that's everything. Okay. Right after mission meeting, yes. Thank uh -huh. you. And I think Sister Adams announced you had family... Again, this is a little hot. I'm going to ask uh, that uh, we've been live and, and on Facebook. This is still hot. Uh, if you don't understand hot, turn it down. All right. As far as the system is concerned, we'll keep the system on until the program to service is completed. So don't turn anything off until service is completely completed. That's the last thing we'll do is we'll turn all our systems off, all right? Again, keep my wife in prayer. Uh, she lost a nephew a few days ago. So keep her in prayer and uh, us in prayer as well as we go into 2022, amen? All right, come on, choir. There's something I'm forgetting. I'll think of it later. Now, it went from soft to nothing. Find a mill. It went from soft to nothing. Amen. Oh, yeah, brother, brother, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, you know his name. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You know, uh, a lot of times we get caught up in our own things, but now we finna boost up outreach. 
Okay, a lot of times for us to get a blessing, we got to bless somebody else. So we're going to be asking for donations for blankets, socks, and gloves and scarves because we're going to get busy. New Salem, the outreach program is going to go out. And also, if you got hurt or pains in your body, maybe it's God trying to tell you you need to get a little bit more active. You know, we need to get out. I'm going out in the street. I'm always out in the street. I'm going out in the street, and I'm going to ask some of you to go with me because we got to get off the bench and get in the front row. You know, because as I look out, I see some empty spots. And for a church with as much power as we got in here, that's unacceptable. In our eyes and in God's eyes, we got to get out there and get busy. So we'll be getting with you to let you know when we go out there. We'll be working with other organizations, but... What we want to do is this ministry. Okay, this ministry has a lot of love. Everybody that wasn't brought up in here that migrated to here, that God brought here, knows that love. If you've been here, you may not know the full extent of the love. But if God brought you here, so you know a whole different level of love. So we got to spread that love. You know, if you want to be blessed, become a blessing. It's about stepping up. See, God blessed me, he gave me, he gave me. But what'd you do with the blessing? If you don't do something with it, he's going to take it away from you. We got to get busy. So I'm going to be asking each one of you, when we do outreach, to step up and let's go out there. Not only to give people stuff, but we got to give them salvation, offer them salvation, and offer them a church home. Because we have one of the best church homes in the country. We get the best teaching. We got the best choir, best musicians. God, y'all don't know how much God has added on to this church. God has added on so much, and he wants to add much, much more. But the only way that's going to happen is we got to get busy, busy, busy. We got to get off of our keisters and get on our feet, okay? It's all right to have the word in your heart, but you need to get it out of your heart. You know, if God is so good to you, give it away. If he done brought you so far, let him do it for somebody else. Right. Let's do this, please. Uh, I won't be before you very long. Uh, I know that I told you guys at New Salem Missionary Baptist Church, uh, since he mentioned outreach, has a prison ministry. Um, a couple of days ago, I went and picked up my ID so I can get back in the prison and do what God has called me to do. Oh, yes, you can. 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 Oh, yes, you can.
what she can say. Yes, she can. Yes, she can. Oh, yes, she can. of faith for tithes and offerings as we symbolically lift our tithes and offerings to the Lord and we'll read it together Lord I know that tithes and offering is your way of financing your church and blessing your people you said in your word if I would give you would give it back pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give into my bosom Thank you for this seed song. Multiply as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Malachi 3, 8 through 9. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Give it ever unto the Lord, uh, unto the Lord, give what you give, give it as unto the
and we thank you for all that you have done, God. Singing that song, God, I thought about all the names that we called you. God. And I remember that you was a way maker. I remember, God, that you were a miracle worker. God, you reminded me that you're a promise keeper. But most important in the dark nights, God, you're my light in darkness. So we just thank you for who you are, God. We love you for who you are, God. We praise you for who you are, God. We honor you for who you are, God. You blessed us this day. So we just, we just magnify you. Bless this offering, Father God. Bless your man that's going to preach the word today. Continue to just have your way, God. And we'll continue to say hallelujah. For you deserve the highest praise. Hallelujah. We just thank you. Hallelujah. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Jacob, my God. I stand humbly before your throne of grace, asking me to fill you, fill me with your word, Father, and not my own. Father God, guide my tongue, guide my mouth, just guide me, Father. Father God, forgive me of my sins. For I have sinned against you and only you. Father, I stand before you as your servant. Use me as you see fit. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, this is a familiar text. I will be coming out of the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter. I am, will be reading the first through the ninth verse, and then I'll s skip a few and go down to uh, verse 18 to 23. <clears throat> the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that <clears throat> he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowl came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell along thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. 
but other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some in a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who have ears to hear, let him hear. Continuing on. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When it, anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it, not then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which is sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word and anon with joy received it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some and a hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. You may be seated. You know, I, uh, I originally had planned because it has been my thing not to really prepare for anything. I mean, I know the word of God. God has given me a measure of faith for each man. He has given that measure. But because of the concerns of the world, I haven't disciplined myself to read the word of God, the seed that he has planted in me like I should. Just being honest. Uh, that is why uh, the topic of this sermon is what it, what's the condition of your dirt? This parable lets us know that our hearts is the dirt. Our hearts is where God comes to plant his seed. God is the sower uh, in this instance. I don't know much about farming, but I do know that farmers spend a lot of time preparing the soil in order to reap a good harvest. Let me take my time because, like I said, the sermon that uh, I was going to give the first of the year was my plan. I ended up giving it on uh, watch night because there again, I wasn't prepared. So I said, hey, I've been preparing this one, so let me give that one. Um, I was cultivated in a confusing environment. My mother was a Christian. My father, I would say, was a bit of an atheist. Let me give you a small example of this by telling you a short story. Uh, this story is very, very true. In telling this story, I also need to ask uh, one of my sisters for forgiveness because I'm going to mention her in this story and I didn't get her permission to tell it, even though it's my story too. <laughs> yeah. uh, we were little. Uh, I was probably about seven and she was about eight. She was my closest sibling at the time and my mother sent us to the store. Now my mother planted uh, the seed of virtue in us. And we went to Johnny Jabara's on 13th in Minnesota. You kids have no idea what I'm talking about, but it used to be there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we get to the store. My mother had given us this note. 
and she help, would have us take it to the manager of the store and he would give us the groceries. He would tell us to go get the groceries and bring him the receipt. And uh, of course, we didn't have any money. I didn't understand what was going on at the time, but he was doing my mother a favor by giving us groceries until she could get some money. Anyway, my sister passed by uh, this little candy rack in the store. And back then, bubble gum was a penny a piece. One penny could buy you a big old piece of bubble gum and she wanted one. And I knew we didn't have any money, so she took the money, I mean, took the bubble gum <laughs> and put it in her pocket. And we went and got the groceries and whatever, and we took the receipt back up to the guy. And I knew that my mother was a woman of God, and she wasn't gonna like that. So as we were leaving the store, my sister stopped, we had a two block walk. She was like, here, here's half of it as a bribe. And she popped hers in her mouth. She gave me the other half. Well, I knew my mother wasn't going to like the fact that my sister was stealing because she had implanted in us the seed of virtue. She watered it. God gave us the seed, but she watered it. And I slipped a, <laughs> my piece of gum in my pocket without my sister seeing me. And we walked the two blocks and she chewed the gum and she got to the door, she spit hers out so my mother wouldn't know. And my mother opened the door, we carried the groceries in. I pulled my gum out of my pocket. I said, look, Ma, look what Sandra gave me. She said, well, y'all didn't have any money. I said, I know, I told her that, I told her. But anyway, my mother, the woman of virtue, the woman of God, whipped my sister all the way back to the store with a penny to give to the guy at the store and tell him she was sorry for stealing that gum. Now, don't get it twisted. I wasn't a goody two-shoes, <laughs> you know. But my father, on the other hand, the atheist, I heard him cuss God many times as uh, he worked on his car. Now, when I was little, he would drag me out there with him. I didn't like working on cars, but he would drag me out there with him. And he instilled some things in me, too. You know? Uh, the seed that he planted in me was a good work ethic, number one. Even though he wasn't a man of God, he cussed, he drank, he kind of instilled that in me, too. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. But where I'm going with this, what does this have to do with sowing seed? Sowing seed is a choice. You know, you've heard me say many a times, I've spent 16 years of my life in prison because of the choices I made. I don't blame anybody of, about the choices I made. I can't. I made them, and to every choice that you make, there is a consequence. But what I want to focus on with this parable is not the fact that you, uh, we all gonna make mistakes, because we are, but God will forgive us of our sins. What I really want to focus on is the parable uh, found in verse 5 and 6 and 7. Verse 5 reads, if you find your, no, verse 5 is about finding yourself between a rock and a hard place, that rocky soil. You know, uh, if you don't have the word of God rooted and grounded in you, in your heart, in your dirt, a small issue of life will uproot that seed that God has planted in you. Right. Not only uh, will persecution and hard time burn up your joy, 
in the seed of harvest that God has started to plant in you, but it could also burn up your chance for eternal life. Or as the temptations say, you might find yourself standing on shaky ground. Well, well. Verse 7 tells us that the weeds come and choke out the good seed. It's like people in our lives. Weedy folks. <laughs> Weedy folks. I mean, for me, even when I was in prison, I tried to do the right thing. I, I know that may sound crazy, but I wanted to get out. And that was my motivation. But we should know that the Lord wants us all to be free. He wants us to harvest his promises because that is the promises of God, that harvest. I've always wanted to do the right thing, but falling in with the weeds or the weedy people would set me back from that. I knew better. I just didn't do better. You know, I especially want to point that out to the younger people, that people in your life can make your heart change because we start to try to please people. And like Pastor always talks about his please things, we want to covet our things. We, we put everything else in our lives before God. Yes, sir. So we cheat ourselves out of the harvest of eternal life when we do that. <laughs> and I have to admit, I wasn't really prepared for this. I, I, I worked yesterday morning. I kept telling my wife, I'll do it. I'll, I'll prepare. I'll prepare. I'll prepare but I never did. My PlayStation 5, usually is not something I'm praying about, uh, took the place of me preparing for my sermon. So that's why when I get up here, I look like an idiot or a fool. Not that the word of God hasn't been planted in me. It's because I don't water it by reading this every day. You know, so therefore, what you reap, you shall also sow. Well, That's also in this word of God. You know, um, I'm terrible about procrastinating, very terrible. That's one of the things I said this year I'm going to try to do different is not procrastinate. You know, I hear the church crying out for help. They ain't going to beg nobody. But I know that the Lord also tugs at my heart and tells me, maybe if you study, you can teach. I can remember when I spent those 16 years in that cage in and out. Every time I went into prison, I picked up the Bible, and God kept me. I used to say, well, maybe it's my fighting skills. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. I can give credit only to God. You know? Because I don't care how bad you are, how tough you are, how mean you are. There's always somebody tough. So this year, I invite you to pray with me, you know? I, I, I blame my health problems. There's another weed. We get to blaming problems and this and that that's going on in our lives, and it will choke the life out of you. That is a weed that need to be pulled up and uprooted because you don't need that in your life, you know? Nothing is too tough for the Lord. 
I disappoint myself. Tom. In time, again, when I say that I love the Lord more than anything, knowing all that he's done for me, I was never to be released from prison, never. The judge said if he had his way, he throw me under the prison and throw away the key. There was another time when I was in prison. My brother was beat badly by the prison guards. And I kept praying and praying. He was at another prison. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. Bring my brother to this prison with me. They said he had lost his mind. He did have some psychosis going on. But I prayed. And he ended up in the same prison with me. And they don't let inmates visit inmates. That's not allowed. But because I trusted in the Lord, they allowed me to go to a cell and talk to him. I, I never will forget that day. They couldn't do anything with him. He was walking around. He was in uh, solitary. They have this little dog run, they call it. They put him in the dog run. He was walking back and forth. It was winter time. He stripped off all his clothes. They left him outside freezing for hours. I went to one of the guards, I said, that's my brother. Let me go talk to him. And behold, God, but God Amen. allowed them to let me out of my cell and go talk to my brother in this cage. See, I know that God is real. And I've seen what he can do. So why am I so hard hearted? Why can't I just study his word? Why can't I do as he has called me to do? The prison ministry thing. That's all I really wanted to do was prison ministry. Being in prison did something to me. It allowed me to let God cultivate the seed that he had planted in me. Right. It changed me. People that know me from the streets, if they see me, when they see me, they say, you are not the same dude. You are not the same guy. Young people, don't let negative people choke out your seed. All right. Let your seed grow. Yes, let sir. God harvest his promises in you. Yes, Reap Lord. that harvest. Yes, don't let anyone take that from you. Don't let, a, let Satan come and steal your seed. Right. You know, I, I even feel today that I'm still standing on shaky ground. Like Pastor said, you need to know that you know that you know that you know that you're saved. Sometimes I, I realize someone said to me at work just the other day, you're a minister? I can't tell. I didn't get offended. What it did was it made me take a look at me. Well, well. Because the word says that you shall know the uh, the tree. Not a 
by the fruit that it bears. And I had to ask myself, what fruit do I bear on this job? What example do I set for these people? Do they see me get upset and argue with my VSL? Yes, they do. Do they see me do things that are ungodly? Yes, they do. I realize that we're not perfect, but as long as we keep watering the seed that God has planted into us, there's a change. Yes, sir. And that's what I want. I want that change to continue. I want to continue to grow in spirit and in God's word and God's truth. Amen. I want to forsake this world that I'm so attracted to. the money, the popularity. When I was out there in the world, I had that. When I was selling dope, of course, you got friends when you're selling dope because everybody want to get high for free. <laughs> you know, just keeping it real. But I was still not at peace. I'm just being honest, I was not at peace. No matter how much money I had, no, much, how, no matter how much dope I sold, no matter how many people called me friend, I was still not at peace. I've heard, I know you've heard me speak on my family and how they turned their back on me. God has never turned his back on me. As a matter of fact, God has restored me to my family. Yes, sir. Just this Christmas, this Christmas, I, I wasn't even expecting it. You know, my, my daughters was at my sister's house. I went there and I felt love by my family for the first time in decades. Not even my family, my children, my seed, the seed that the Lord has given me. I cannot describe how that feels. So, water the seed of God, people. Yes, Lord. I'm begging you, I'm imploring you to read your word and watch out for these so-called homies, friends, whatever, because you won't be living your best life. <laughs> You'll be living or dying your worst death. Because heaven, you'll never get to see. Like I said, I wasn't prepared. You just didn't know. You just didn't know. You just didn't know. I don't have a whole lot to say. But the doors to my father's house is open. salvation, why don't you stand? If you know not Jesus and the pardon of your sin, you need some good song. Because right now, you ain't nothing but dirt. But you need God to plant within you that seed of salvation which comes only through Christ Jesus.
by confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believing in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. So we extend to you the privilege of salvation only in Christ Jesus. Who's gonna warn you? And if you got a burden, we ask you to come. He said, come unto me, all you that are late and are heavy late. And he said, I'll give you something. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke. Learn of me. For my yoke is easy. And my burdens are light. So yoke up with Jesus. If you done yoked up with your partners, then yoked up with your friends. Yoked up with Jesus.
So just keep my family in prayer right now. I ask you. Amen. Just for prayer. Okay. Uh, come on, ladies. We're going to pray and we're going to cover Sister Phelps. And uh, I hear Brother Lewis talking all the time about the babies. We've got a lot of young men that have walked in and out of this church. And I pray even sometimes for my own son, Charlie, because I want to make sure he knows Jesus. I, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be around, and I don't know how much longer he's going to be around. But I want to make sure I ain't going to leave here and not know that he knows who Jesus is. So Lord, we pray right now for Sister Phelps. In a few days, she's going to have surgery according to the doctors. But you've already performed surgery. So, so, so we believe in the name of Jesus. We consider it done that all would be well with her body as she recovers. Thank you for keeping her even in the midst of the COVID generation. In and out of that hospital day and night. You never failed, Lord. So we know right now that you're going to do exceedingly and abundantly all that we could ever think or desire. It's in Jesus' name. Bless her body. Give the doctors insight, understanding. Order them, Lord. Order their hands as they do the surgery and, 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 as, they, and as they perform what needs to be done. We thank you for it. Even now, I pray for my own child. <laughs> hmm. Even sometimes, like Joe, more than I even pray for myself. That you bless, that you save, that you work in his life, Lord, that you show yourself to him just as you've shown yourself to us. Show yourself to him, Lord. Let him know that you're real. Work a work in his life. If we'll ever give you the praise. We'll forever give you the glory. So we thank you. for your man, Norman Decker, that is learning to let go and just let you. We, we write down notes and we prepare thoughts in our minds, but it's you that delivers the message. So thank you for sowing that seed in his life. Allow him to do that to others, Lord. then we all give you the praise. We'll all give you the glory. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So that's saying to all of us. You know, uh, we got young men that, that were a part of this congregation that we don't see right now. Cody, we got we got to do what we got to do. He don't want to be bothered, I, but but we need to bother him. We need to make sacrifices. BJ and others that we need to make sacrifice. We got, we got to spend some time out of self to, to draw others. That's what God has done. God has used somebody, Tracy Williams, to draw you. It's time for God to use you to draw somebody. God used your daddy and your mama to draw you. <laughs> It's been time that you use, that he use you to draw somebody. 
he used your mama to draw you. It's about time he used you to draw your son. That he'll come by saying, what must I do? <laughs> Not only be saved, but to serve this God. To worship him. So we're going to have stand and we'll have closing remarks from our speaker. Heavenly Father God. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be in your presence once again. Father, we ask because we dare not tell you anything <laughs> that you will watch over us and keep us as we leave this place, as we go throughout our week, Father God. Father, we ask that you will let your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in us. In Jesus' name, amen.